Hey everyone, Diogo Marques here, your friend in sales. Today I want to share an advice with you that I got from my mentor that has been very helpful to me in my journey in order to become the person that I want to become and it will help you in order to get to where you want to go in life. This is, what, this is how this works. He got to the financial point where I want to be and I have conversations with him today. So he identifies things that he sees that I'm doing that are not in line with what he did. It doesn't mean that you don't have to make adjustments, but you have to give him or her the benefit of essentially have been doing this for decades now. So they have this akin tune to the things that uh, look with the highest potential or not. So essentially what you need to be doing is understanding that you are not the person yet that you want to become. So it's natural for you to become a little anxious or like a little nervous or sometimes like get a little thrown off by some things because you're not there yet. It's like you want to bench press this amount of weight and you now at this present point, you don't have that, uh, that much strength yet. You will, but not today, essentially. So when you get a mentor, essentially he's telling you, you need to put your, your elbows a little bit out, outwards and all that. So a couple of techniques, you know, in order to improve the, the overall process. So when you are doing things, the key point, the, the key takeaway from this is that let's say you haven't done any phone calls at all. You're not used to doing that, right? So you now have the benefit of someone telling you, like a person with experience, telling you that the way to get there is by doing phone calls, right? So when you start doing phone calls, you're not used to doing that, right? So you're lacking techniques, you are lacking some ways of maneuvering, so in the conversation in order to get what you, what, what you want. I just want you to realize that it is all normal and it is all part of your journey. You are on your path to becoming what you want to become. So it's natural that you are going to face some resistance because you're not used to doing things like that. Let's say, for instance, you are used to pretty much like waste time. And now, since you started having a conversation with someone that like takes the thing to the minute because he needs to make, let's say, 50, 50 con phone calls a day, right? So essentially, it takes all your energy and effort and focus in order to get to 50, 50 calls a day mark, right? So now you stop doing things that you, you, you were used to doing up to this specific point in time because you're now seeing that these are not money-making generating activities. So you kill them essentially, right? Because you're now dealing with someone that is very money-oriented. They know that their time is, has a value, right? And the more phone calls you crank up, right? the higher the high likelihood of you getting meetings in front of people that do have the money to finance your way until you get to, to becoming a billionaire. So essentially this all comes down to this is that you on your end, you need to improve the things that you're still not there yet, right? So you keep working on these. I'll give you an example. I want to become a PhD in economics. So in my future, I am a PhD in economics. Right. So every single day up until that point, obviously after that point, I'll keep working on it. But what I mean is if today you still don't have a bachelor's, right, you have to keep working on it. It's like a, a progressive, right, a progressive state until you get there. So you get into college, right, you keep studying, keep doing the homeworks, the homework assignments, you get the exams, nail those, right. Then you do your thesis in the masters and then you get to the thing in the PhD and then you complete it, right? You get the diploma. It's the same thing when you are doing sales or when you are bench pressing like that example, it's the same thing. So coming, com coming back to what I was saying. So I want to become a PhD in economics, right? So I got in the school that I wanted. I got into a London School of Economics and I'm studying to get to there, right? So I'm working on the bachelor's and the master's and the PhD and they will complete and then I will complete my dream. Right? This is the part of the knowledge part. Then the part regarding the money part and the money part is essentially four things. The first one and remember, this is all kind of um, this is expression from psychologists. I, I, I forget it, but it's it's like um, it's not like block by block by block. It's kind of uh, one on top of the other. They, they mix a bit. It's a, you have parts of it that kind of, um, kind of 
concentrate in the other in the other ones. So the main four key takeaways from the money part are you first and foremost knowing exactly what you want out of life, exactly who you are in the world and what you want to accomplish from the market's perspective. I'll give you an example. I already told you I'm finance oriented, on oriented. So essentially everything that comes down to knowledge in regards to the finance sector, I'm interested because it's something like, it's, it's a pull. It's not a, a logical decision, it's a love decision. It's something that you keep going, going back to it over and over and over again, like wanting to play guitar or something. It's just, it's just it, your mind is like always going, going back to the same thing, the, the thing that you really love doing, right? Me, it's finance. I love finance sector, so I keep co coming back to it. I, I, lo I love reading stock sheets and all that. It's something that I really enjoy. It's, you might be something else. Just find what that is. And it's actually not that hard to find because you pretty much like on a default state without any pressure, you keep going back to it over and over again. So that's the thing, right? The second part is, so this is where we're essentially talking about the Aki guy. So this is your passion, the thing that you love doing the most. The second one is, the second intersection is the thing that you are skilled at. Something that's, for some reason, usually works out, right? Even if it, now at the present time, the whole thing is not working, you're not getting what you want, but you're good at it. Right? It's something that you, you can, let's say, Every time that you come across a problem with computers, for some reason you usually find the troubleshooting and fix it. It's like it's in your nature. It's just it's probably the way that you think, the pro uh, probably the way that your brain is wired. For some reason, when you are at the specific situation, it usually works out. So this is your strength. The strength combined with your passion provides an immense, uh, an immense arrow in regards to the exactly where you want to point regarding the market's needs. And the market's needs, inse instead of you like trying to come up with a new Facebook or something like that, if you do, fine. But there are some things that you can take away from the market that essentially it is a market need. And a good example is increasing sales. If you approach a business owner with the prospect of saying, I improve sales, right? Why would they say no, right? And as they're they are idiots, right? So this can, this logic can pretty much, because the economy essentially revolves around sales. Companies have better sales. They pretty much have, have better prospects of increasing everyone's likelihood of being successful because company keeps persevering. They have more sales. They probably can restructure the, the operations, have better margins. So like, Everything works out when you have better sales. So if this is a market-driven economy, meaning the market is the one that is in charge, right? The market determines exactly what they want or not. So if you already know that the market needs sales, right? And you know that you have a, fi uh, a passion for finance, right? And you are good at, let's say in my specific case is sales. I like talking to people, it's my thing. Like for, when I found myself in situations and I needed to talk my way out of it, it usually works. So I'm good with sales. And I have market approval, meaning every time that I uh, approach the market in the sense that I want to I wanna do sales, right? And that, and that I'm oversimplifying things, but I want to do sales, right? And if I shifted this in the section that I love the most, meaning what I, I just, finance is just more appealing to me, right? Now I have the passion factor. So it's the strength that I have it's the market's needs, and then there's, there's this uh, connection there, and the additional connection regarding what I love doing, right? So if you keep this up, you will essentially know who you are and what your role is in the world. And this is re really, I'm, I'm like underlining this like times 50. This is super important because let's say you're a salesperson, right? So, and the market needs sales, so fine there. But you, you hate the industry that you're working at you're going to quit, right? Or you love doing something, right? And you are great at uh, sp something, right? And then the market doesn't need it, right? So you're going to fail. So you see that there's this connection in between these three. And this is important for you to realize where you are in each one. Because otherwise you're going to just, not, it's like, if you're not optimizing your output in the economy because you are uncertain regarding who you are and what your role is in, in all this, it's like 
you won't get any far very far because essentially you need to figure out yourself first and this is the first step so I, I want you to really understand this and take time to like figure things out in this perspective because as soon as you first figure out exactly who you are where you want to be like in the, the sector and in regards to what is it that you're going to deliver to the world it's like this part it's easier I can tell you that some people find it sooner than others some people never find it so I hope that it is not you and all about this video is in regards to helping you understand this remember something that you're really passionate about it's not a love decision it's not a, a logical decision it is a love decision it's a, forget about the rest it's something that you for some reason you like playing guitar right it's like it's your thing right so this is the first one the second one is regarding your strength it's like you probably love playing guitar but like you're not that good at it right so or you have something that for some reason everybody's like damn man it's, you know how to do this thing it's like uh, in a bricolage or like home construction or painting or something like it's a, you don't have to put that much inf effort into it it comes natural to you that's your strength so you need to combine your strength with the thing that you love doing and I'll give you, I already gave you my example this is I'm very logical oriented and I'm because I'm like I'm I'm not detailed oriented but I'm very analytical I like thinking about things and I like using different approaches into solving things. I have like a logical perspective on things. It's for some reason, it's just the way that I approach the world. Some people are more socially oriented, meaning like the feelings from people get into that. I'm like, if life doesn't go, let's go a little bit right to the right. This is how I approach things. So I'm very logical oriented and I'm sales oriented because I, I want, I like using this type of logic when I'm dealing with people. So that's my strength. So using this with the sector that I'm in love with, which is the financial sector, I came across the insurance sector. So that makes sense for me. And since I'm a logical person, right, I got in contact with a mentor, someone that is doing this and very successful, he is only doing life insurance. And since life insurance is very much more like financially oriented than general insurance, so it, it's even better. So it, it really makes sense to me, I'm logical again, see, I see the connection. So finance again, right? So like in the in a in a broader sense of the world. So words. So so sales with logic, right? Finance sector, specifically life insurance. Now we need a need from the market, right? So I got in contact with life insurance companies, right? And they saw that. And this is not a, there, there was not a surprise for me because I already did some experiences in regards to trying to figure out what is it that the market needed. And usually when I approach the market in a pers from a perspective of I want to promote, I want to I sell, right? And since the, the, the passion factor was there because it was a insurance sector, especially life insurance sector, it's like there's a, good, there's a good vibe from people there because they see it, right? And sometimes I think we fail in life, life a lot essentially because of twofold, well, threefold essentially. Essentially, who you don't know who you are, so so there's a, a little confusion there, and it's normal because you need to figure out yourself first. S the first one, the second one is essentially people who you hang around with, and people it's like we have a relationship problem. Essentially, you're looking to figure out to find the people that can get you to wealthy land. Think about it. I'm a life insurance agent. I spend all my day talking with MFs that pretty much don't give a shit about life insurance because there's. It's like they're, they're not the type of people that you want as your customers, but you don't know that, right? You need to call people, right? This is all about the, the funnel thing. You're calling people the red ones and you get to the yellow ones like the, yeah, more or less interested. And then you get to the green ones. Those are the ones that are gonna get you wealthy because the more, the, the more of those you have, right? If each one of those pays 50,000 in premiums and you have like 100 of them, you just made yourself a millionaire, right? There's, there's no, crazy equation about this it really isn't it's all about effort and trying to like optimizing your day towards speaking to people that do have the resources that you you need right and you have what they need so there's the a conversation there and this uh, brings me to my my last point which is in regards to the activities that you have to be doing every single day. So I started out this talking about the PhD because I want to improve my skill set in the economic sector because I started the other, around, the other way around essentially. I started with sales first. So I'm learning about finance later. This is something might sound, I don't know, counter counterintuitive, but this is how I started. 
So I started with a strength, right? And now I'm like improving my, essentially my knowledge around, around the sector. So and it said there's several people that do this. So there's, there's no, if that's you, don't worry about it. Really don't. Because uh, the other way around, like you s find people that start with finance and have trouble figuring out people later because they became so analytical. So <laughs> at this time, probably, I think I, I need to become a little bit more analytical because I'm some like, I'm a little bit crazy regarding dealing with people. So this is the point. So if you know who you are and you are at the right industry, something that just makes sense to you, right? Now you have a relationship problem. And the way for you to solve the relationship problem is essentially with twofold. You need to improve your perception of people and the way to deal with them. So it's a little bit of psychology here. You don't need to become a full-blown psychologist or psycho psychotherapist, but you need to know how to deal with people. And this is something that sometimes people don't do because if they don't know how to deal with people, right, how are you going to get your message across, right? If people perceive you as being, let's say, too aggressive or too soft or too whatever thing that is very, that's a little bit rude telling you, but if that's how the, the world perceives you, you're not going to get very far. So you need to understand people. You need to figure people out and pretty much sometimes knock them around a bit. Now, so what, you don't believe in MetLife? You don't believe in a billion dollar company? You don't believe in what I'm telling you? You don't believe in insurance? What is it that you don't believe? Right? Knocking them around a bit, right? So that they understand that you have 7 billion people to talk to, right? All of them have cell phone numbers probably, right? So that's not the last one. And that's the thing that about dealing with people that you have to realize when you are cold calling, which is, I find that sometimes when people, when I'm getting, when cold calling people, in the back of their minds, they're still evaluating the process of, I'm superior, you are cold calling me, so you must be beneath me. In, in, a, in a weird fucked up way and subconscious way, I think some people have that perception. So you knock them around every time that you perceive that they are speaking to you in that specific manner and say, you have my phone, we have my phone number. So if for some reason you need any assistance, send us an email and we'll see about that. So it's like you killed it. See what I mean? So it's not like, uh, so every time that I hear about the follow-ups and the, I, I'm not that sure about that. Seriously, I'm, maybe I'm biased because I'm used to doing sales door to door. So it's like an immediate thing in a moment, but I had this event company b back in the day, so a couple, couple, 10 years ago, and we had some follow-ups, but, uh, but I'll be honest with you, you hear all, of, all about that thing about some people don't do follow-ups and even less to even more follow-ups to a point that like up to eight follow-ups, eventually you get the sale, right? I don't believe that. I really don't. Because think about it. Let's say we're having a conversation, right? Like uh, without any bullshit, right? You are standing in front of me, right? We're having a conversation. And I ask you, listen, ask everything you want regarding life, to, do, to understand regarding life insurance, right? So you ask me your questions and I deliver the answers is exactly that you need. I talk about, like I said, the three pillars regarding, you know, they have the financial wherewithal, you know, they have a problem. They're trying to figure out if this is a good product for them or not to solve that problem, right? And they do have the money to back it up. So they have the alpha, they have the money and they have a problem. So this is from their end. From your end, you are, Presenting yourself as a person that that fit, that knows the product well, so comes back to like I said, it's the economics parts, understanding the life insurance sector, and understanding the product very well, so that you can iterate over and over again in specific situations and different situations, so that every time that people address a, a certain issue, you know essentially how to answer that because you know the product, right? This is why it's so important to keep studying the process, keep studying the the um, the product and essentially the um, the sector overall so that people have a better understanding when you are delivering your pitch you, you are more certain when you are conveying your message and then it's about essentially you understanding some like inner misconception that that person has and they will throw some objections at you right so you need to understand people better so you can kind of knock them around a bit and, and like essentially like address these but like get them to sit down again right so so now that you have done this now let me ask you why would be would be any reason 
for them to postpone it until the eighth call until they close the sale, until you close the sale. Does that make any sense? No, right? Why in the world would they need to have eight more calls with you until they made a decision? So you didn't address the thing that it was worrying him or the error or the thing that he didn't understand in the beginning because otherwise they would close the thing immediately, right? You wouldn't. So what's the point of the follow-ups and keep follow-ups? It's, it's like you're begging, right? Why are you begging? Makes no sense. They should be honored for you to spending a little of your time in your day to speaking with them. It's the other way around. So this is what I was telling you about in my previous videos regarding you placing yourself in a position of being superior to them. And this is precisely because if you are addressing them in a way that you are like begging and like following up and following up and following up and following up, man, after a point, it's like, why is this guy calling me for the eighth time? Right? They already made a decision. So you need to address this when you're having a conversation with that, with that person. And the only way that you are going to do this effectively is if you have your Ikigai in place, meaning you know what you're good at, you studied hard regarding the, the product, you, you are studying the industry, you know your, your passion very, very well, and you are addressing a specific need of the market. In a specific case, it's not the industry sector, uh, sector that is uh, hiring you, but it's a client that is in need of that product. And if he doesn't understand the need, it's because you're not explaining it very well. So, but if you do, because you understand people and you keep working on your processes better, right? You are improving your overall system until you get to that point where their mentor, where your mentor is. My mentor spends his day working on a product, understanding better ways of explaining it to people, working as process of dealing with people, right? And he knows his passion. When you do this and when you keep talking to people and like, okay, this is what, another one of those. So let me address this this way, but forget about being like apologetical and like, uh, like, like you're trying to, you know, like like uh, and uh, you are like an an employee trying to please be on a call with me. Don't do that, man. That doesn't make any sense. Man, you have seven billion people to talk to. Right? You can pick up the phone today and call some guy in Rwanda, right, or in Mexico or in Russia. Why are you wasting time with this motherfucker? As soon as that person realizes that you have more people to talk to, they all act differently. They, it's like, makes no sense, right? So what I want for you to realize, you know, usually my videos are a little bit, like I go a little bit, uh, bit all over the place, but I think sometimes it's important for people to see the overall thing and then get to the specifics. And the specifics essentially is, as soon as you figure yourself out, you know your passion, you know what you're good at and keep working on it, until you pass that, like, uh, not that good yet, then you're becoming good, then you become great, right? So it's like a keep overall uh, process. So I'm improving economics, I'm improving my uh, product knowledge, I'm improving my people, people's understanding. So it's like you become better every single day, so, so you train, right? So you keep doing that because you know your passion, right? And you stay within one sector because it's gonna work. You're gonna, like, look at your life, like, 50 years ago and said, I spent 50 years in this sector. This is a successful person. They are not like one year here, two months there, another two months there. It's like 50 years in. Now you probably have like billions in life insurance premiums. This is what we are talking about here. Separating men from kids, right? Billions in revenue. Like this is a serious fucking entrepreneur, right? And that's why, because he stayed focused, he kept improving the process, kept improving his automation, understanding of how to deal with people, right? And kept, and kept at it, essentially. This is what successful people do. So as soon as you have this, all this part figured out, remember it's like your passion, what you're good at, and understanding people. So it's like improving the overall process in regards to the product that you are delivering them. The, these are the main key factors. As long as you keep doing this every single day, you're looking towards your PhD version of, of your life, essentially. It's like completing the thing to the highest level possible. 
it's and this is regarding the money part and the knowledge part and you just have to understand that the problem that you have right now and this is what entails more effort in from your end is essentially being in front of qualified people that's pretty much it just think about it like your day today you spend the whole day talking to a bunch of motherfuckers that have anything a bunch of dysfunction dysfunctional people that pretty much just nothing happens you didn't make a sale right but then you kept at it right keep making 50 calls keep making 50 calls and then you got three people that paid you 10,000 in premium each if your markup is 50 percent right you have a nice month here so what I want for you to realize is that if you are at a specific point in your life that some parts are not clear this is normal but the main parts for you to get clear on the first one is like I told you is your Ikigai we just addressed this so it's your passion what you're good at keep improving the product knowledge keep improving your people's knowledge so you can address them better and choose them better right and then attack a specific sector in regards to the thing that you love doing the most and when you do have the benefit of having a mentor and if you don't have one right now I encourage you for you to find the best one in your industry and look look uh, f find a way to get in like in contact with him or her and trying to like them creating this relationship of a, of a mentorship essentially I have a cell phone number him him with me today because I searched for that person first and and now every time I call him that I have some questions he answers because he already knows what I want right I uh, he is today what I want to be in the future so he understands that and I think sometimes I think to be honest I think he feels lonely because he knows it's hard right and he understands that this is not easy this is not easy at all so when younger people approach a person like that and like showing like truth from the heart that you really want to achieve that they, they feel sensitized with that they understand that really well more than most people because they did it right so you need to find that person in your industry in your sector it's like a greatest programmer or a greatest car salesperson so the person that I like in your sector the one is going to make the difference because he has the key he has the knowledge he has the thing that you're not that clear at he, he can like entangle that stuff for you so you can see the thing better right so that's the advice that I have for you and when it comes down to the things that he or she tells you or even if you figure out for those things for yourself and it's being hard you just keep at it because it, let's say it's being hard for you to making phone calls keep doing the phone calls eventually your body will start helping you in order to like to, okay we understand this is like this this is the thing that we need to to do in order to survive right it's your body like in your your mind is on a subconscious level is doing that so it's like okay we have to keep doing this right so let's keep doing this so I'm getting a little nervous so I'm not nervous now I'm fine now let's do 10 more calls it's going to be something like this it's a rough path but it's the way for you to keep improving and, I, and I'll be honest with you I started doing door to door and like I told you this is this is the one thing that I and actually know I'm good at and like I'm doing like it's it comes natural to me it's like a fish in the water it's like it's natural to me when I st started doing phone calls but to rich people it's a really different thing than calling like people that have no money right because essentially it's like a they're smarter they're, they're more educated like they have they're more attuned to to what you're saying right so it's different and from my experience what I'm telling you is that the more you do it the better you you become and it might sound like okay this is not nothing to it but it, it is like this it's like today you made 50 calls and like when you're making the next call it's like more laser guided focus because you keep hearing the same things over and over again and you couldn't possibly have this happening for you unless you kept pushing the calls and the only way for you to keep pushing the calls is because you have a little bit more certainty level coming up from your inner inside self saying to you this is what I love doing although it's not working but this is something that I love doing the market needs it because essentially like from the insurance perspective we're improving sales for them and for people essentially you are delivering one million buck policy in exchange for like one thousand buck premium a year this is an example so why wouldn't they need it right 
So as soon as you become start becoming more certain in what you're delivering, no faults and no uh, like because as soon as you start the uncertainty starts kicking in, it's like the boat starts rocking a bit. But if you're certain, right, you you can knock them around a bit. Why why are you saying that? You don't believe me? You only believe a life insurance company? What is it? They're gonna feel that. They're gonna feel that pressure, and that pressure comes because you are certain. See what I mean? It's like all these peop all these pieces are connected because you are certain. You are in a position where sometimes when, when you have people throw you back an objection, you immediately counter and say, Why, what is it? Don't believe me? I don't believe a billion dollar insurance company with more than almost 200 years old. What is it? So they, they, they see you differently. And this can only come if you are certain when conveying your message. And since this is becoming essentially a process of you trying to find the, the main people in your industry, this is the, way, the best way for you to do this. So find what you love doing, find the thing that you are greatest at doing and keep working on your message with a mentor, find knowing the benchmark and you will succeed. Be well.